Greetings and salutations, and let the madness begin. I mean, for the tournament, not for the show. My name is Jake Quarry, that is Derek Schultz, and this is the incredibly creatively and appropriately named Quarry and Schultz program on the ISC Sports Network. And Derek, there were... Oh, sorry. That's probably Chateau at my side door. Here, I'll, I'll mute my phone. There we go. How long have we done this? They, they come early in the morning. Why do you never mute anything? They come early in the morning. I like to be alerted. So when things are happening, I want to know. Like Myers or Kroger's, they have a deal. Bang, notification, alert. People are at your door. Bang, notification, alert. Dick's Sporting Goods is having a sale. Boom, alert. Are those women's glasses? No. They kind of look like it. They're men's glasses. I don't know. They They're... might be um, unisex. I'm not sure. They are pretty sleek. They're soft. <laughs> I think they soften my face a little bit. So, yeah, I guess there, there's a little bit of a femme vibe there, but not like in a weird way. Just, you know. Okay. Well, anyway, the tournament brackets are out there. There are a number of times over the course of our doing the radio show where you would begin the show with Andy Williams. It's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> this is absolutely See, you do remember them, right? stuff about the show. Of yes. Course. This is one here. of them because there is just something magical about the first week of the NCAA tournament. I am super stoked for Thursday. The brackets are out. You get the play in games. There's a ton to get to. Um, final four picks that nobody cares about but you. But let's begin with this. The big focus here locally, two storylines. Number one, Indiana State. Yeah. Disappointment they didn't get in. I understand it, but but this is what I don't understand. Okay? I understand that Indiana State, they didn't necessarily have, like, the quality win to say, look right here at what we did. Mm. Right? But the net, that's the latest in these, you know, People like you that get into all these Analytics. acronyms and yeah, you know metrics. whatever. Yep. At one time, it was the Sagarin ratings. They were the end all be all was the Sagarin ratings. Then it was well, no, th- that's that's totally passe. Now it's you know everything's about Ken Palm, and then Ken Palm was the thing, and then it was RPI, and then it was like CBI or whatever. Now the latest is the net, and this was apparently developed by the NCAA. The NCAA, the the national e- what equivalency test or something, I, I, whatever. The highest rank of anybody that didn't get in was Indiana State. They were 29th. Yeah. So the NCAA's own metric that they came up with, Indiana State passed with flying colors, yet they didn't get in. What are we doing? Yeah, I, I think the problem for Indiana State was that the um, the metrics were all they had. You know, on paper, the resume, because really they went one and four. So, in wait a minute. Are you games. telling me that actual production trumps what a computer says? I, I'm just saying it, it kind of flipped. What a novel concept. It kind of flipped around where I, I think they leaned. I mean, they make this stuff up as they go, right? The criteria seems to change year to year, which is what the frustration is. But I, I think what happened with Indiana State is that when you really dove into what they did this year, it wasn't enough. And. The problem that I have with that, Jake, is that the complaint for these mid-majors is, well, you didn't beat anybody. And Josh Schertz and these coaches are like, then come play us. Right. Then right. then let us play you. We'll go there. We'll play on a neutral floor. They we'll go to, Michigan State we'll go well, to right. Neptune. We don't care. We'll play you wherever you want to go. And, you know, let, let's face it, Jake, Illinois, IU, Purdue, Butler, those teams are never going to step foot in Holman Center. Right. And play a game. They've got nothing to, to gain by doing that. And, you know, it's not like it was 25, 30 years ago where you, you would see that happen a whole heck of a lot of the time where, where teams would play home and homes and they play one and twos and, and you don't get that anymore. Um, I feel for Indiana State. I, I, I'll say this. I think you were right in the sense that Indiana State was getting in if we didn't have this historic fluke run championship yes. week. Yeah. I mean, you usually have – two upsets maybe you have three in the conference tournaments we have like six this year where you had five or six straight bid stealers like nc state was not getting in the tournament correct, correct. without winning that 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 league oregon the same thing um and i think ultimately this was a really bad year for indiana state to be on the cut line yeah that's a, a fair way of putting it i here is my my one thought about it and why indiana state should have gotten in indiana state should have gotten in not because of the net not because they won 28 games or whatever it was, not because they went to Michigan State and played well. Indiana State should have gotten in, not because they won the MoVal regular season. They should have gotten in because they had all of those characteristics. But if you put 
what is the NCAA tournament? Derek, one thing we know about the NCAA tournament is this. This is a tournament and an American event that has been built on the Cinderella. Yeah. It's been built on schools and players that you didn't know anything about introducing themselves on the biggest stage and being flash in the pan stars. Northern Iowa for a week and a half. Yeah. You know, South Alabama and peanut butter and jelly for a week and a half. Loyola Marymount for a week and a half. That's what the tournament is. Now, once you get into the regional finals, the television ratings would dictate you got to have the Blue Bloods there. Yeah. People don't want to see George Mason in the Final Four. No. Right? People don't want to see Wichita State in the Final Four. Loyola. And yeah. that Wichita State mascot you don't like, right? Shocker. Yeah, he's scary. He's a wheat shocker. <laughs> yes. Look him so, up. If you're not but if you have the opportunity, I'm just looking here, okay? Let's look at the 11 seeds. NC State was an automatic, right? They won their conference. Yes. Oregon, same. Yep. New Mexico, did they win to get in? Uh, I think, I don't, th- yeah, they did. Because the, the complaint with New Mexico was that they probably weren't getting in without it. Okay, I'm trying to find, was UAB automatic? Yes, they were the four seed in, what, Conference USA? Not Conference USA, uh, the American Okay, I'll just go with this. Virginia and Colorado State. Virginia. Okay, we'll take Virginia. Yeah. Virginia's in as a 10 seed. Ugh. If Virginia wins two games and goes to the Sweet 16, it's like, okay, they were national champs like yeah. a handful of years Man, ago. so hard to watch. They're out of the ACC. Yeah, they've got a fun. well-known coach. Nobody cares that Virginia. If Indiana State is put in that spot instead of Virginia and Indiana State pulls an upset or two, then people are like, here we go. Yeah. Madness. I, I agree. Crea- you know what I mean? I, I, I- I think my one complaint, Jake. My, if, my point being, a well-deserving mid-major does more for you if they win a game or two than a back-their-way-in power five team. I agree. If they were to flip Virginia with any of those teams, ISU, St. John's, Seton Hall, I think they would have done about as good of a job. The, the, the one team that I kind of had a gripe with was Virginia. I just I don't think they're any good. Their metrics weren't good. I don't know why they're in. I have no idea how, how Michigan State is the, the top nine seed. Uh, other than the fact that it says Michigan State on their jerseys, like I would agree Michigan with that. State, I've watched Michigan State a lot this year, and they've got all the talent in the world. That's a really mediocre. Their basketball resume team. was really under a really mediocre team. Um, now, just watch; they'll go to the Sweet Sixteen because I said that, right? Because Izzo just kind of does that. And the other team that that I had a problem with, um, as far as where they were seated, was um, FAU. Um, you know, FAU was safely in the field. FAU had a collection of terrible losses. I think they had four quad four losses. Okay. Go ahead, and then I'll tell you another one. Um, you know, th- those were kind of the – but you're, g- you're going to get that every year, Jake. You're going to get seeding um, issues every single year. If I'm not mistaken, like around Valentine's Day, Gonzaga was out of the tournament. Yeah, they beat Kentucky. And they're a five seed now. They, they beat Kentucky, and that changed everything for them. That, that was the big – like you mentioned, you need the oomph win. That right. was the oomph win for Gonzaga, beating UK. Uh, okay, let's get to Purdue. Yeah, because Gonzaga's in their region, so that's a good – Transition. I love, not like, love Purdue's draw. And I'll tell you why. It's scary, isn't it? No, I love it. It's scary to love. No, yeah, I mean, exactly. it's scary to love Here's why, where Derek. Purdue is. My fear, and I, I said this to you a couple of times, the 8-9 game is where you get either a rising power five that started to put together you know, a young team and you don't want to mess with them, or just some team that has that's that's loaded and oozing with like six seven wing flurry talent athleticism, typically. Like look at Florida Atlantic Northwestern. Would Purdue really want to play the winner of Florida Atlantic and Northwestern? Northwestern gives them fits as it is. Florida Atlantic just went to the national title game a year ago. Or you look at another region eight nine game. Texas A&M and Nebraska. Nebraska knows them well. A&M, athletic. It, it helped Purdue that there were so many crappy Big Ten teams on the 8-9 line because they got placed out of all those other regions. Correct. So the 8-9 they got, to me, is perfect. Because while I – admittedly, I haven't seen a lot of them, and I think maybe TCU leans a little more towards the other way than, than Utah State. But I think they're teams that basically would try to beat Purdue by just simply playing Purdue's style of play. Well, you're not going to do that. The only way you beat Purdue is by try, by totally disrupting Purdue and trying to interrupt anything that they do. So that second round game to me was the one that I was the most worried about with Purdue because Purdue does play up to opponent. Okay, mm-hmm. they get past Utah State, TC, and yes, I do think they're going to beat John Ackerman. 
who's been a listener of this program and a watcher of this show him. forever. What's that? You're jinxing him. John Ackerman's a Montana State guy. Played there. Oh, wow. Loves Montana yeah. State. But Montana State or Grambling, I do think Purdue gets past that. Purdue's never going to be more prepared for a game in their life than the 116 matchup Correct. <laughs> on Correct. Friday. I, I can say that. And then outside of that, I mean, all bets are off once you get down there to, you know, Gonzaga and Kansas. You know, that can be How tough, about this, but... Jake? Um, look, I, I understand 2024 is not 2023 or 1994 or 1984. What do Purdue, Creighton, and Tennessee have in common? Purdue, Creighton, and Tennessee. Yeah. They're the one, two, three in that region. Okay. I don't know. They never do it. They never do it. Tennessee's never been to a Final Four. Rick Barnes, if you want to make fun of Matt Painter in March, go take a look at Rick Barnes and what he's done with his teams at Texas and Tennessee and how many times that they've flopped. Well, he's been to Texas Final um, Fours, right? Back to back? No, he went to a Texas Final Four. Tennessee's okay. program has never right, been right, to a right, Final Four. Right. Creighton came a play away from a Final Four yeah, and returned did. some key players there, but they also have kind of run into it. Um I don't know how much I believe in, like, March experiences, but there are teams that you trust more in March. Like, you trusted Bob Knight more in March right. than you did Dean Smith. Right. Dean Smith was a wonderful Hall of Fame legendary coach, but you, you just You trust you Tom did. Bezo more than Tom Pitts. Yeah, yeah. You, you just do. Um, and I think Purdue is in a region with a lot of teams that, like them, have not broken through their glass ceiling. Um, I think what also helps Purdue is that and this is kind of funny to say because they're a four seed and they're still probably a top 15 level team. This is pound for pound because of their lack of depth and injuries. This is Kansas's one of Kansas's worst teams of the last 20 years. Right. Um, this is one of Gonzaga's worst teams of the last 20 Gonzaga's years. Gonzaga's starting to play a little bit. They're good. Don't get me wrong. Like even in a down year, Kansas and Gonzaga are, are two of the top 15 teams in the country, but they're not vintage KU and Gonzaga teams. Okay, Derek, let's get right to this. Okay. The top four seed, because there's always one, the top four seed that shockingly gets beat in the first round, go. Uh, on the one, two, three, or four line? Yep. Uh, geez. I, I think <sighs> you usually see a 4-13 matchup, I, I feel like. Um, the, the, the team that I worry about, the, the team with the highest variance to me on the line is Auburn. I think when Auburn is good, they are really good. Like, Final Four national title contender good. When they're bad, they can get beat. Um, so I'd probably put Auburn in that mix. Arizona as well, Jake. Arizona's had this really weird season where they're super athletic and Caleb Love and, and you know, they're talented. Uh, Arizona somehow lost eight games. And I'm telling you, I, I, I saw them in person at – Gamebridge Fieldhouse. I have no idea how that team lost eight games in that crappy league that they play. No idea. Um, Purdue really handled them outside of a 10-minute stretch where there was a lid on the basket. So Arizona is the other team to me that I think could either win it all or be gone before the second weekend. What about you? I'm going to say of the one through fours that get stunned, okay, I have a five that I definitely think is going to get stunned, but that doesn't equate to our question now, does it? No. Okay, one to four to be beaten. I just had it. Hang on just a second. Um, I think Kentucky, as much as I love the Horizon League, and thank you to the Horizon League for having us out, by the way. It was a lot of fun for the Horizon League championships, and I certainly hope that Oakland makes some noise because I hate Kentucky. I love the Horizon League, and I hate Kentucky, so that's a natural fit, right? Um, who did you say, Derek? I, I think Arizona would be my pick, but Auburn – is the highest variance team to me. Moorhead State's going to stun Illinois. Yeah, okay. Moorhead State's going to beat H- Illinois. How about this first step while we're talking past history? Do you know the last time Illinois was in the Sweet 16? Made the second weekend? Didn't they just do it uh, like three years ago? Uh, D. Brown, Darren Williams. Team? Okay, the team with Arizona? Really? Bruce Weber. Okay. 2005 is the last time that Illinois got out of the first week. Illinois gets so Illinois gets upset, and then how about this? Give they me, were a one seed, and they lost to an eight nine team. Give me your double digit seed that sneaks into the Sweet Sixteen. There's uh, always one. You know what? I I haven't even looked at this bracket uh, since Sunday night. Um, I'm not I'm not prepared to answer this question. Um, I have to do more research. Um, did this sneak up on you today? I, I, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. How about this one? The Dukes of James Madison. 
yes. are in a 5-12 matchup. That, that was, that's my 5-12. <laughs> Wisconsin, outside of when they've had NBA talent, like remember that Kaminsky team and Sam Decker, that group that went to a couple of Final Fours and went to the title game? Outside of that, they flopped because their style of play doesn't really translate. You know, they want to get into a fist fight. Um, and that usually doesn't work in the NCAA tournament. So I, I think JMU um, would be my pick there because Duke even – Duke's okay. It's not a great Duke team. It's a very good one. Um, they've got a sneaky, tough game against Vermont, even though Vermont seems to always be in the tournament, but they seem to rarely actually win tournament games. Yeah, okay, I have one other category after this one. The Oregon Ducks. I love Dana Altman. Okay. The Oregon Ducks are my Sweet 16 Cinderella. Okay. okay, now, here's the last question for you. Creighton's tough. The team, how about this? South Carolina, eh, but Creighton's tough. The the team that is seated in the top half of a bracket where you're like, I didn't even know they played this year. South Carolina would be one of them for me. Oh, like they have a top six level seed? Yeah. Clemson. I, I, that's a good one. <laughs> they were way overseeded. Is right? Brad Brownell still there, Rake? Yes, he is. He is? He's been there. God bless Brad. Great guy, by the way. Indiana guy. Um, He's been there like 15 years. Yeah. And it just shows you schools like that, when you have this unbelievable football program, all you got to do is keep it in the center lane. Like, just be, you know what? They're, they're never great, but they're competitive, and they're, they're pretty consistent at Clemson, and that's all he's done there for the last, I don't know, decade and a half. Did you hear much about Baylor this year? No, I never hear anything about Baylor. That's a good program. Now, the team that only because of what they did to round out the year, Iowa State. Iowa State hammered Houston. Yeah. And I think Houston's really good. Iowa State did it a couple of years ago where they won the Big 12 tournament and I had them go into the Final Four and they lost, I think, either their first or second game. I feel like they would have been in the pod where R.J. Hunter and Georgia State won. Um, they would have been in that pod of teams, but I, I can't remember. I got to go back and look. Bottom line is this for Purdue in the NCAA tournament and the tournament in general. It is obviously the best time of year. And what a lot of people, I think, say about Purdue, and there may be some truth to it, is that the challenge for Big Ten teams is the fact that the Big Ten is officiated differently. I don't think that's the case. I don't think the Big Ten is officiated differently. I think the Big Ten is simply the least versatile in its style of play across the conference. And so teams in the Big Ten get used to playing a particular style, as Derek had just mentioned, a fist fight, so to speak, Purdue, Wisconsin, you know, even Nebraska. These teams kind of want to slow you down and rely on guards. Nebraska plays a little faster pace. But point being, I don't know that you have the versatility within league to have to play different styles and different varieties that prepares you for the quick turnaround of the NCAA tournament. And that's been a challenge for the conference itself. But this Purdue team this year, Derek, I think has the understanding of that, the leadership, and the most immovable object in Zach Eady. I just think that Purdue is finally poised and built to get over the hump and make a serious yeah, run. Yeah, me too. Um, it's almost, if not now, when. Um, you have the team. You have the draw. I, I just think that it's it's all right there in front of them. I I'll say this, because I think people are viewing this as Final Four or bust. If Purdue, let's say hypothetically, Purdue gets to the regional final and – Creighton hits a three-pointer with 3.7 seconds left to put them up by two, and then they end up winning that game by two points. Are you going to call the whole season a failure? That'd be really tough for me to do. You know, March, still at the end of the day, it's a single, random... You're right. A single elimination, random tournament. Um, but I think the bottom line for Purdue is you got to win three games. Right? you got to win three games. Some people would say four. <laughs> Some people would say six. Um, I think you got to win three games to feel fine about where you are. And, and maybe that's unfair because, again, uh, March can be random and cruel, but uh, that's the position that Purdue has put itself in. I, right? That Texas team kind of scares me for Purdue. Oh, I don't think Texas is going to get out in the first round. You may be right. Actually, you know what? If they get Virginia, who's the worst team in the tournament, then – you're really down on Virginia. Uh, I'll tell you this. There are some of these games that are like this. You couldn't pay me to watch Texas play the winner of Colorado State, Virginia. Got zero interest in watching that game. I could pay you. None. No, zero interest. Pay. Zero interest. Well, you have to meet my appearance fee. Bare minimum. You you don't have an appearance fee. Yeah, I do. Call Josh. Josh? My lawyer. <laughs> slash okay. representative. Is that Josh Schertz who's uh, soon to be in St. Louis? <laughs> it is funny when – by the way – 
I fully understand. I'm, my, my one of my closest friends at IU was a slew guy, and his parents were season six. That that's a good program with a lot of history. Josh Schertz should hold out for a better job. I would agree. I would totally. Yeah, so, agree slew with is uh, it's a better job than Indiana State, but slew is two and not, a half million though. But still, slew's I, not the job that I'd be holding out for. I would agree. I, I'd that. wait for a Power Six job to open up. Um, I, I would not take the slew job. Um. What was I going to say right before that? But he's probably going to slew if it's not even official by the time this airs. I'm trying to think of what I'm talking about. Your attorney fees with Josh. My attorney, know. yeah, my attorney fees. Oh, isn't it funny when people on Twitter, you know, <laughs> not that follower account really matters, but sometimes they'll put like the representative in there for inquiries, email, blah blah blah, and it's like, dude, you've got 957 followers. I don't think anybody is inquiring about, <laughs> you know. Having you out for an appearance or anything. Do you Whereas I get the, constant inquiries all the time. People are inquiring. What's your follower count now? Uh, 18,000 something. Okay. I mean, it's so fake, right? How many? It is. I, I mean, it's, I, I, I would guess, honestly, that my follower count is probably 6,000. Yeah. Yeah. A third of that. Yeah. It, it is. Which is still great. I mean, it's great to have 6,000 people give a crap about what you have to say, but that's probably what you would ha- you'd have it to is, slice it, it in a third. It is amazing now. I mean, like yeah. every other reply I get now is the whole, like, you know. Yeah. It's, it's just not the same. The interaction is not the same as it was five years ago. It's just, it's not. Um, and all these counts are still active, but they're not active. Right. You know? Like Neil Brown, I saw it. I was throwing my ish around, so was Neil at the JCC. He's not active on it. He was on Twitter all the time. He's barely on there now. How do you know? Did you ask him about it? I didn't ask him about his Twitter account. No, we were talking about our families and stuff like that. Let's we'll see the last time Neil tweeted. Yeah, it's been a while. Pete the Planner was another guy who was real active on Twitter, and now he's barely on there. I, I, and I know other people that have left it. Um, I can't I, I can't leave it behind. I just I can't. You're I've invested addicted too to much it. into it. Yeah, it's the first thing that I check in the morning. It's the last thing that I check before I go to sleep. Uh, let's mention two other things. You're uh, not kidding. Neil hadn't tweeted since January. College basketball-wise, um, Indiana State and the NIT, along with Butler, they're in the same region. If they both win their first games, Butler goes to Holman Center, side of the John McDonald court storm That's in right. the same matchup. Um, also, I think Evansville is playing postseason basketball. Purdue-Fort Wayne is playing postseason basketball. So we've got a couple of other teams. And then the Indiana women hosting in Bloomington. They were right on the cut line. They're taking on the Fairfield Fighting Stags, baby. Actually, they started the 87 National Championship yeah. run playing again. 31 and 1, Fairfield Fighting Stags. So we'll see what happens. The only reason I know that my buddy Stolman is the biggest Fairfield U booster slash supporter. I think he's their biggest donor. He donates fifty dollars a year. Um, I think. <laughs> What's he get for that? <laughs> I told you the Fairfield Stag in 1987. He gets GA seats to every game. In 1987, yeah. Derek, the Fairfield Stag, I felt so sorry for him. It was this like haphazard mall reindeer outfit, and then it had no hooves and it, Air Jordans. Oh, that actually is probably a cool look, right? <laughs> I guess. Yeah. No, we used to go to Fair- Alumni Hall, Fairfield, Connecticut. We used to go to games all the time. What kind of school is Fairfield? Uh, it's a good school. Um, they pull a lot of um, tri-state kids, so like Jersey, New York, um, that that sort of area. What league is that? Mac. So it's they the won. That's so right. the men lost the Mac final. Um, they were the top seed remaining because the one seed got beat, but they lost to St. Peter. So Fairfield was the two, and then the women ended up going undefeated in the Mac, and they won the uh, league championship. So for people that don't know, since I grew up out there, to differentiate it from the MAC, which is like Ball State and Toledo right. and things like that, you just add a little bit, like not in an obnoxious way, but a little bit of an emphasis on the extra A. Just MAAC. Because it's Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. Right. MAAC. Yeah. Now, that sounds stupid. That sounds kind of cheesy. MAAC. Like, people would laugh at that. It's just MAC and MAC. Like that. Okay. And you just add a little emphasis on the extra A. By the way, it is time for our Hero of the Week, is it not? It is. Brought to you by right here. our Hoagie of the Week and Hoagies and Hops. Oh, geez. I've got a slaw. Can we – do we have, do we have a paper towel? i got a slaw. I have a slaw issue. We have a code hey, red on the slaw. Derek, well, I, Derek has a leaking sandwich. I, I added the what? slaw too early. Thank you, JD, coming into the rescue. Well, that is disgusting. No, no. It, it's, what are you putting on there? It's actually delicious. It's just that I put – you don't like slaw? I love slaw. And I went way you too heavy. It on there. What? I went way too heavy on the slaw. So we have an issue with the slaw. So a little bit clean That's up on – That's not slaw, Derek. That's like – 
Thousand Island. No, no, the Thousand Island's on top. That's all slaw. It's house-made slaw, and it's really good. Here, let me take a bite just because it's going a little haywire. It's it, Look at the bottom of that thing. It's dripping. It's disgusting. Oh, it's so good. But it's... It's so good. Market Street. Oh, my God. It's good. The slaw is amazing. Mark, it's the best slaw I've ever had in my life. It was all over your desk. I put too much on it. Put too much on it. Um, Market Street. So, ham, Black Forest ham, d turkey, house slaw, Munster, Thousand Island. No LT, no O, no oil. Bang. No frills. Really good sando, which is our um, hoagie of the week. National Cheesesteak Day, Jake. Sunday. Sunday, Ooh. Sunday, Sunday. 24th. 15% of all proceeds... At Hoagies and Hops, benefit the MLK Center right there in Midtown, 40th in Illinois. Uh, Chili Water Tap Room, the same thing. So they're also pitching in. So anything you get, beer wise, sando wise, side wise, Hoagies and Hops, Chili Water Brewing Tap Room, Sunday, 42nd and Boulevard, this Sunday. Sunday, 15% of all proceeds, Martin Luther King Jr. For what Center. time to what time? Uh, uh, as long as they're open. Yeah. As long as they're open. Right there in Butler Tarkin. What time do they close? In Midtown. I think they close at 8 on Sundays, okay. but I'll. Double check that to be sure. Hoagiesandhops.com um, for catering and all of that. And the Chili Water Tap Room mm. and Mephiliopolis. This is the Chocolate Blonde Ale. Outstanding. As you mentioned, Christina's company is Philiopolis. That's her company that she basically owns the restaurant through because it's a combination of Philadelphia and Indianapolis. And this is a really good beer. You come out. And a really cool can. See the Poli family and Darren probably. All will be there, I would imagine, on... Sunday, right? It's good. It's sweet, and you get the chocolate notes in there. Really, really good. I want to dive back into the slot, too. Hero of the Week. Congrats to the Duquesne Dukes. They are NCAA tournament bound for the first time in 47 years. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 50 years last the time. the A-10, right? Ran to the A-10 title. They were the sixth seed in their tournament. Duquesne really did have a good history way back in the day. They went to the first Final Four. Were they four. a bid stealer, or they've gotten in? No, they they would not have gotten in. They were the sixth seed, like I said in the in the A ten. Um, they reached the not the first final four, the second final four, because the first NCAA tournament was thirty nine. Uh, so they were in that final four with Indiana, the when they won it all in forty. Um, and from nineteen fifty two, or sorry, to, from nineteen fifty to nineteen sixty two, they reached the NIT final four six times and won the NIT in fifty five. And in the fifties, that, that was deal. a good event. That was one of the, you know, just as prominent in a lot of those years as the NCAA tournament. But uh, they'll take on BYU in the opening round. They're a private school in Pittsburgh. If you go, Pittsburgh, I I don't know why I feel this way. I thought Pittsburgh would be like Milwaukee, like Indy, like that level of city. When I went to Pittsburgh, I couldn't believe how big it was. It was was huge. It was like sprawled out everywhere. And I don't know what end of the city that it's on, but we we went by Pitt's campus and we went by Duquesne's campus and it was really nice. It's a nice, you know, private, I'm assuming it's Jesuit, right? Like Catholic Jesuit school? I'm not sure, actually. Okay. I feel like you always know stuff like this. I always, okay, here's the thing. I'm, of the NCAA tournament teams, Derek. Yeah. Duquesne is high on this list. Just a quick glance of the tournament, of the field. What school would have the fewest number of Americans that could tell you where it's located? Oh, boy. Samford? Okay, how about Longwood? California? Down, he's... Utah? Missouri? V, what starts with a V? Virginia. Yes, okay, cool. That's <laughs> way up. Rick's giving me a... You know what? I don't think a lot of people... I know where it is because uh, I Colgate? grew up out there. I, I don't think a lot of people know where Colgate is. is yeah. It, I, I think... Let me guess. I want to say Colgate is in New Hampshire. New York State. Okay. Yeah. Is it upstate way New York? up. Way up. Okay. Yeah. Um. I mean, people Wagner? people know Grand Canyon just because. Well, where's the Grand Canyon, right? Okay. Wagner's Wagner? Long Island. Is it? Yep. Okay. Why did my cousin Billy Jack went to Wagner? Um. I think that's about it, right? People know Marquette's Milwaukee, right? I think so. Yeah. St. Peter's people know it's Jersey now. They wouldn't have known that before. Okay. Where's McNeese? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Texas? Mississippi? Atlanta? Louisiana. Okay. Louisiana. Yeah. Okay. Good one. 
learning a lot on today's show. We're off to a good start <laughs> on today's show. Okay. We come we're, back. Yeah. We're dripping. We're, we're, we're dripping condiments. So good. We, we've soaked desks, right? We, we have a guy, one half of us, that didn't even look at the bracket yet. It was like, wait a minute, hang on. This is totally throwing me for a loop. And we're wearing women's glasses. What a show. What a country. I usually don't start my research until Wednesday for the bracket. The playing games are tonight. Who cares? You don't have to pick the playing games. Who cares? Ultimate, who cares? Indiana played in one of them. That was the only play-in game that I've watched in 20 years, probably. Yeah, who cares? We come back on the show. Colts free agency. Are they doing enough? Are you complaining about it? What should they do if you are complaining about it? I'll kind of defend Chris Ballard, okay. but then also point out something that I think they're clearly missing that's been a little bit of a trend. And we'll talk about that when we come back. It's Quarian Schultz on the ISC Sports Network. Don't go anywhere. You know we cover all sports in Central Indiana. Hop in. It's going to be a long night. Bailey and Wood Mortgage Lender, proud partner of News 8 Sports Hummer. Hey, AC. Nice snap. Mortgage is a snap. Duh. Bailey and Wood, a lending hand for Wish TV Sports. Welcome back. Commercial breaks be a little bit longer than that. <laughs> there we go. All right. All right, Vince. We're coming back in three. Hold on. We're already back. Let me get the slaw off the mustache. We'll get this in post because Vince Vince came back to me early with the cue. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. Three, two, one. Welcome back. Bailey Wood presents Corey and Schultz here on the ISC Sports Network. Thanks to our friends at Bailey and Wood, 855-350-HOME. Why are you looking at me like that? BAWFG.com. Did you decide to sleep in today? 18 Indiana branch locations for our friends at Bailey and Wood and five-star customer service. So whether you need to refinance or maybe you're trying to get your pre-approval for a mortgage, making a move, do so with our friends at Bailey and Wood Financial the best. Group. And they take that money and they put it right back into the communities in mostly in central Indiana, but they're now spread out all throughout I the I mean, state. look, all you got to do is we mentioned, Derek, every year, and it's a highlight in August, you go to the golf outing, you see all the people mm-hmm. that come out for it, and, I mean, it's impressive, right? Yeah. Um, and, and that's those are people that, you know, that money that they're giving back to the schools and the choirs and the, the, the organizations around, particularly the south side of Indianapolis, it's great. It is. Yeah, they're great people, great folks, and uh, Mike Scott built quite the culture there, I think, with his group. 855-350-HOME. B-A-W-F-G dot com. Let's talk Colts free agency. Uh, they're bringing back a lot of their in-house guys. I mean, we talked about it last week. We were on the air when it was announced that Grover Stewart would be back and Kenny Moore, Michael Pittman Jr. We already knew can, about. Can you do this without burping for like a second? I didn't burp. I was clearing my throat. <clears throat> Rigo, Tyquan Lewis, Trey Sermon, Ronnie Harrison. They've lost the guys you do expect them to lose. Um, you know, McKenzie and, and Isaiah McKenzie and Tony Brown, they basically kicked off the team anyway. Right. So you knew they were going to go. Gardner Minshew, you knew was going to go somewhere where he'd have the chance to start. Zach Moss, I think you knew, was going to parlay a good season into a a bigger contract. Um, They haven't really done anything outside. Julian Uh, Blackman's curious. Yeah, they brought in Joe Flacco to be QB2, which whatever is fine. And then Raekwon Davis is a a depth signing, a rotational piece to replace Taven Bryan probably and and spell DeForest Buckner. which is fine, which is what they needed to do. I- I'm just surprised that they haven't addressed corner or safety. They need a lot of defensive back help. I, they are clearly banking on Juju Brents to be healthy. Yeah. I-, I-, I I did like Juju Brents when he played. Yeah, me too. I think he's athletic. I think he's got big size. But you don't know. He's got to stay healthy, right? But you don't know. You don't know with and, Dallas Flowers either. And safety as well. Now, yeah. one would think that they're going to address these in the draft. But then again, Derek, wide receiver and tight end. I, if Bowers is yeah. there for tight end, you got to go that route. Um. The Colts were pretty conservative, for sure. But, you know, they believe in the whole, like, re-sign our own and then go see what's out there. I get that. The one thing about free agency that I'll say and just trades in the offseason, people and fans get get honed in on one player, right? Got to get this guy. We got to get, get this guy. We got to get this guy. And then once it happens, then you're like, oh, yeah, I forgot. 
Yeah. They, they went out and got that guy. I mean, more often than not, it, it's not like it's a – remember what a huge coup it was when they got Andre Johnson and Frank Gore? Yeah. And then what did it really get them? Yeah. Right. I just think at the end of the day, um, the Colts need good players, and they brought back a bunch of good players. So they still need to add on that, but you weren't going to get a better receiver than Michael Pittman Jr. You weren't going right. to get a better nickelback than uh, than Kenny Moore. You weren't going to get a better uh, defensive tackle than Grover Stewart, and they brought all those guys back. I, I just worry, Jake. So I'll defend Ballard in that case, but I worry because Ballard has the propensity to – have a position group that is just a blind spot that he tries to skate by right, you're on right. what they have. And remember receiver a couple of years ago, pass rush. Um, and I think Coy, he did it last year with corner. I mean, it was, frankly, and, and I get that the expectations were lower. We didn't know that the Colts were going to end up being a playoff contender. But it was malpractice to go into the season with two UDFAs as you're starting two corners. Undrafted free agents. Yeah, to, having two UDFAs there. And then Dallas Flowers goes down, and that squeezes you even more. Um they can't roll into this year with what they have right now in the defensive secondary. It's just it's not even close to good enough. Right. Um, you hope that Brents gets better, right? You hope Jalen Jones gets better. Um, you hope Ronnie Thomas gets better. Um, but you can't just rely on that. You have to bring in, I think, the, at least one other, veteran presence. Derek, the one thing to me that's the most troubling is the wrong word, but I guess frustrating, elongated, whatever you want to look at it, is the pass rush because – they're still in a situation where there's talk that they could go high in the draft on pass rush. And it's like, how many times are we going to do this? I mean, I think Quiddy pays a nice player. Dio's a nice player, but they still have yet to get, and, and look, it's because those guys don't grow on trees granted, but they still have yet to get their stable pass rush guys. And that part also is eventually you got to start spinning elsewhere, right? Yeah, the, the pass rush has was effective last year, right, where they fifth in sacks, but they don't really have – we talked about this. They don't have a keep-you-up-at-night type pass rush. And I think teams figured out at the end of the year that, look, if, if we just max protect, if we just take away their pass rush, we could pick apart this secondary because it's not any good. They've got liabilities all over the field. Um, and if the Colts go back on paper with what they have right now in the defensive backfield, teams are just going to employ that same exact strategy. Right. So that's that to me is the issue. But you know, teams like the Texans and and Philly, they're getting splashy free agents, but they're they're replacing guys that they're losing. You know what I mean? So it's not just you're adding on; you're also subtracting a little bit from your team. Sorry, I almost knocked something. Hopefully, I don't hit the slaw over here. Um, you're almost subtracting from your team at the same time. So I think that needs to be taken into account. It's not sexy to bring back Kenny Moore, but if you were the, I don't know, the Bears and you signed Kenny Moore, people would be excited about that. would be like, hell yeah. Yeah, you're right. He's a good player. And so that, that's what I think um, fans need to kind of pump the, the brakes a little bit. Um, what would you think about what Pittsburgh did? Because I think that was one of the big headlines as well. Well, here's what Pittsburgh did, Derek. I think Pittsburgh got better because what Pittsburgh did was they took a quarterback in – you know, they probably had seen enough of in Kenny Pickett, yeah. right? In his little hands. He's got hands like yours. Yeah, he does have little hands. Yeah. And they went out basically, and it, for a million bucks, they got Russell Wilson, who's probably done, right? So then they gave up not very much to, to acquire a guy that I think is going to be a good player in, in Justin Fields. Yeah. I still think Fields can play. I don't think he was given much around him in Chicago. So – I like what they did because it didn't cost them a lot, right? You got a free roll. You got two free rolls, basically. Yeah. Um, worst case scenario, Wilson maybe can usher in Fields. Um, I was all the way in on Fields, and now I'm kind of out on Fields. Um, I I don't think that there's something there that we're missing. He might be better than what he showed in Chicago, but I don't think he's like franchise level quarterback good. That may be. Um, but you're right. The Steelers aren't losing anything by doing this, and you and you knew that Kenny Pickett wasn't going to be the guy. I'm trying to think of this, Derek, and this is thankfully, actually, I'm glad about the fact that this is now you know not the Colts even Colts don't have to worry about it. No, what I'm about to say here, the Pittsburgh Steelers now their quarterback room is Russell Wilson, Justin Fields. Did they maybe sign Tyrod Taylor? I, I don't think so. Who am I thinking of? Anyway, they have four quarterbacks. Yeah. All four quarterbacks that they have in their quarterback room as of right now are African-American. Oh, cool. Who was the franchise I'm thinking of? Maybe Ray can, can remember a couple years ago that was the first to do that. Was it Baltimore, maybe? Oh, I, I don't know. I remember it being a talking Tyrod Taylor was a backup for Flacco, right? But I don't know who their third guy was. 
but Flacco's not African American. Or uh, uh, sorry, uh, for um, uh, Lamar Jackson. Duh, that's what I meant. I don't know why I had Flacco on the brain because we were just talking about him. At any rate, my point being, when that happened, I thought like, oh, that's interesting. And then I thought, but isn't it a great sign about just sports in general that it's no longer that, that, we, that it's not like a headline? You know what I mean? Yeah, you that know, is, I just brought it up. That is cool. Um, I don't see any third or fourth quarterback listed on here for who for Pittsburgh. I'm Derek. Do they not have anybody else under contract? They have – who are their – see, this is another thing you should have researched before the show started. I don't do my research until Wednesday for the tournament. Yeah, the only two on the roster right now are Fields and Wilson, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, they don't have any other quarterbacks. Uh, that's not accurate. Yeah, it is accurate. I'm looking at it right now. I'm telling you. No, the internet never lies. Okay. That's exactly what happened. Time for a Love That Play. <laughs> Brought to you by our friends at Love Heating and Cooling, 353-2141. Hey, guess what? It's like 25 degrees when you wake up, and then in the middle of the day, it could be like 70 degrees. We're in that time of year. So if you need to get your heat service, you need to get your AC service, you probably need to get both looked at. Call our friends at Love Heating and Cooling, 353-2141, love-hvac.com. They have been in business since 1920, so clearly they're doing something right. I have a Love HVAC system in my home. Um... Jake doesn't really have a place to call home. He kind of couch surfs. But at Shannon's, right. do they have a love HVAC? Yes. Okay, yeah. So yep. Shannon does in her house because she's um, gainfully employed and and is a homeowner and all that um, and is a grown-up. Um, 353-2141, love-hvac.com. Before Anthony Edwards' dunk last night, which was the dunk of the year in the NBA, did you see that Anthony Edwards one? Yes. Michael Grady on the call, by the way. Um Dunked over John Collins. I mean, it, it was pretty sick. He kind of threw the ball in the rim, which I usually don't like as much, but just because he, he looked did like it he hurt his hand so authoritatively, um, it was crazy. That that would have been my love that play if I didn't compile these notes last night. Um, I love the fact that Joey Votto goes to Toronto. It's his hometown team, right? He's Canadian. He grew up watching them, and blasts a near four hundred foot home run in his first at bat. He's basically trying out right now for the Blue Jays. He's forty years old. He technically doesn't have a contract. He made his major league debut when Vlad Guerrero Jr. was seven years old. Um, it's neat. It's it's neat to see that for Votto. Um, I hope he hangs on a little bit longer because I feel like – I would hope that people would see Joey Votto's career and say that's a Hall of Fame player. He's he's won an MVP, you know what I mean? He was a, a, a fantastic hitter for so long. Um, but some people are still about the counting stats, and Votto falls a little bit short in some of the counting stats. So if he's able to hold on for another year or two and up those numbers just a little bit and stays healthy, I, I think he's going to be close to a lock for the Hall of Fame. But I, w I would love to see him get there. He just seems like a cool dude, right? Yeah, he's a great guy. And that's the biggest thing about him that people seem to he has like? A, he has a great personality. Um, he's kind of got that like a little bit of a sarcastic, dry sort of sense of humor, but you know, 2,100 hits for some people is is going to fall short. Um, he's only 44 homers away from 400. That'd be a nice mark to hit. Um, career 294 hitter, you wouldn't want to dump any lower than that. Um, but, you know, we're talking about how many All-Star games did he make? Could he be one, Will Clark? Two, you remember Will Clark three. late in his career was washed up and done, and then the Cardinals signed him and he had one last push? Yeah, I, I I hope. Um, I think the difference is is that I I got to go back and look at Will Clark. I I think Will Clark had a shorter window of great play than Votto did. Even though Will Clark was one of the, you know, Will Clark's first five or six seasons, he was one of the best players in baseball. Um, but then he he wasn't. You know, like right. I, I'm looking right here. Yeah, 88 to 92, Will Clark was great. Outside of that, he was eh. And there were some injuries in there um, that that ultimately kind of held him back. Yeah, God, he finished he finished in the top five for MVP four times. Will Clark, that, that's pretty player. amazing. Will so, the thrill could swing. I'm still trying to find Joey Voto is who I took um, doing the Scott Van Pelt Baltimore accent for my love that play for this week. We'll come back, give a shout to our friends at Nice Bison. We've got quick hits to get to, and the Indiana Pacers. Um, Tyrese Halliburton's been bad. Um, yes. uh, uh, Something's going on there. Yeah, uh, we'll talk about it. Pacers are hanging in. Their franchise player is not, and he's starting to crack, it sounds like, a little bit. Yes. So we'll discuss when we return. It's Corian Schultz, ISC Sports Network.
At Bailey & Wood, we pride ourselves on our five-star customer service, but at our core, we're a family. Family owned and family to our customers, staff, and our community. From charity events to recognizing hometown heroes, we prioritize giving back to our communities that have always supported our growth. So let us help you get your dream home today. Yeah, I just, I, I don't know what's gotten into Vince here. He's very squirrely on the brakes. Just coming, coming right back. He's doing like, we're, we're back on the air, Derek. Yeah, he's doing like 10 seconds. And um, I'm trying to eat my sando. I'm trying to do some research. Um, you know what? I was super I'm not excited. able to do any of those things. I was super right excited now. today to put on a Horizon League shirt after they had us out. Yeah. And they were so great to us. And Sean was great. And, and you know, a lot, lot to love about the Horizon League. And then I remembered that we have also these shirts, which are just perfect, right? They're great. Yeah, and those this, are from this right here. That is a good looking shirt. Those are from our friends at Nice Bison, and they do all kinds of Indiana related gear, joggers, t shirts, stickers, the whole deal. If you want to check them out at nicebison.com. And here's a little pot sweetener. If you want to order that Bloomington shirt, the All American City, or maybe this Purdue Pete landing on the moon shirt. Or any of their, they've got Gene Cady stuff in there too. Um, they've got that great Seattle Sonics logo. That's the Indianapolis yeah, yeah, skyline that cool. says Indianapolis on it. Fifteen percent off with our code Bison fifteen. So Bison fifteen right now at nicebison.com, and you can be looking pretty fly, pretty sharp in some nice Bison gear. But we appreciate them joining the show here for the month of March. Um, they've been past partners of ours and the IC Sports Network. And as I mentioned, I've got a lot of their stickers. They got cool stuff, very front. cool stuff. A lot of cool stuff there, uh, our friends at Nice Bison. They enjoyed the uh, the clip that I sent to them last week, or two weeks ago, sorry, when we were talking about the difference between a bison and a buffalo. Just the region which, where they grow up. Yeah, which ended up being wrong, because I, I thought it had to do with the testes, and it did not. It had to do with um, geographically where they are, not like anatomically, like the nether regions, but the regions. So it, had, it was uh, not testes related. For that for nice bison bison 15 by the way save 15 percent on your order at nicebison.com jake let's move on to the pacers yeah please let's do okay pacers are um they're not big, struggling big big testy for them on the road here I is think that what you're saying that's inappropriate um i don't think so it's a big road test they won in dallas they won in oklahoma city they won in orlando and they're three of the better performances that they've had all year, and they're sandwiched around a disappointing loss to Chicago where you, you kind of snatch defeat from the jaws of victory, right? Cleveland's good, but they were up 15 early in that game, and they just kind of let it slip away. And the bottom line right now is, Jake, and y you hate to do this because he, he's been such a phenomenon this year and really has has risen as the Pacers have risen, but you know Tyrese Halliburton has been a liability for them. Um He's been bad. Right. Uh, not, not, he struggled for sure. Not just okay. Not not just like, oh, okay, like his numbers are a little bit of a, of a dip. Like he can't he can't make a three-pointer right now. He's shooting like 15% from and three he, this and month. And he's forcing them. It's embarrassing uh, how bad he's been. And it, it's starting to kind of show. Um, you know, he's averaging less than 15 points per game this year, 15, or, uh, this month, 15% three-point shooting. Uh, one of nine last night in their loss to Cleveland. And it's frustrating because if he was even an average player here during this stretch, the Pacers would be, you know, well into the 40 wins and, and all of that. And you hate to hang it all on one guy, but defensively they've been better. Siakam's been great. I think the spare parts have been pretty good. Um, but the Pacers are not shooting the three ball well, and a lot of that has to do with their best players is can't make a basket. Derek, the Pacers' offense is one that when it was clicking and it's in cohesion, it's because it's fast moving. Mm. It's like a pinball, right? There are two factors that came into that. One was Buddy Heald. Buddy Heald's ability to spread the floor, and Buddy Heald's like a water bug. He's yeah. here, then he's there. Then he's here, then he's there. And you're like, where'd he go? And, and the whole time, defenses are adjusting, and that is creating openings elsewhere. That was to advantage Tyrese Halliburton. Pascal Siakam is a wonderful player, but he's a low-post player where the ball goes to him at no fault of his. It's just the way he – when the ball goes down to Siakam, he's more of – a create on the block and the offense slows down a little bit. That allows defenses to come back out, 
find Halliburton and collapse on him. Halliburton is getting less open look threes than before, but he is taking them with the same rate as if he has that open space. He doesn't. He's being guarded differently. He has not adjusted to it. They have not adjusted to the slowdown style, which will eventually one would assume they're going to be okay once they kind of figure that out, but they're still feeling their way through a a major difference in terms of their offensive fluidity without Buddy Heald and with Siakam. But Halliburton has not adjusted well, and the problem is he is playing as if that offense is still that free-flowing nature. It's not. It's just not, and he's being guarded differently. Yeah, I, I think, though, it goes back to the problem is – you know, if you're being guarded differently, look, I, I don't disagree. Being guarded differently doesn't mean you go from being a 35% shooter to a 10% shooter. Right. Like, that's that's on Halliburton. Well, like that he, gets he, in your head, too. Yeah, right? he, he's got to be better than that. Um, you know, if the numbers took a little bit of, of a dip, I, th- I think that was expected. I mean, I, I think it's a combination of things. Um, I, I think the biggest factor is that Halliburton's tank is – He's not on fumes. He's not on E. He's broken down on the side of the road right now with his flashers on waiting for AAA. Right. Like, that's that's where he is because the injury into the All-Star break, I think, just zapped whatever reserves he had left in him. That's fair. And that's going to sound like an excuse because the great players do the All-Star game, right? Giannis goes through this every year. So if you're going to put on your big boy but pants Giannis, and be a superstar, but Giannis you got to do it. every year isn't hosting the All-Star game. Well, that too. But but he's not used to that transition, and and I just think that the the reality is is that where um that's what's happened to Halliburton's Halliburton season. But it, Jake, if he doesn't get better, this is going to nuke the whole thing, because the pace is going to fall into the play in, and if he plays at this level, they're going to lose both of their playing games. Right, and then we're having a very different conversation about what this season was for them, if that ends up happening. You know, there, there's we keep hitting this drum, and I, I feel like we're on repeat every show. But there's a very fine line here between what is a successful season and what is right. not a successful season for the Pacers. But but our expectations have changed over the course of the year. At the beginning of the year, if I'd have told you the Pacers are going to be playing for a play, and we'd have been like, yeah, that's probably about right. Yeah, I agree. But it would add to the frustration if it was right there in front of you, and you still kind of let it slip out of your grasp. Um, that would be a problem. By so the, way, the, the NCAA tournament bracket. Here are the cities that are hosting in the first and second rounds. Okay. Yeah. Brooklyn, Spokane, Omaha, Charlotte, Memphis. Charlotte always hosts. Salt Lake City, Pittsburgh, Indianapolis. Pittsburgh always hosts, I feel like. Okay. If you had to live in two cities not named Indianapolis on that list, where would you go? Where would you live? If money wasn't an issue? Yeah. Brooklyn. Okay. Brooklyn. Okay. What's your second? Brooklyn would be one. Um, I've always heard good things about Charlotte. I heard it's a lot like Indy. Okay. I liked Pittsburgh. I thought Pittsburgh was cool. Pittsburgh's cool. It's kind of old school and new school. The weather, though, would be rough. Yeah, the weather would be rough. It was like 40 and Sweeting was there. I know nothing about Spokane. I just assume everywhere in the Pacific Northwest is awesome and just really cool. Spokane is on the very far eastern side of Washington. So it's on kind of the Washington, Idaho Idaho state line. Because that little sliver of Idaho is right there. So Spokane is. Have you been there? Yes. Is it cool? Yeah, it's. Or is it kind of lame? There's a river that goes through it, but it's flat. Okay. It's Louisville on a river. Well, I guess Louisville's on a river too, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I like Louisville okay. It's Louisville, but three hours from Seattle. Salt Lake City is just too too out there. Um, I wouldn't want to be that far. I think Omaha's underrated. Omaha too, though. It's just too far from everything. It is. That's, that's is, is the problem, even though I heard that's a cool town. Uh, Memphis has a lot of cool history. I'm, I'm looking forward to visiting. I, I don't think I would want to live in Memphis. You are correct. Um, so, yeah, that, that would be my list. Okay. Yep. That'd be my get list. The regional finals, by the way, which are taking place in did the locations or the locations? Dallas, here? Indianapolis, Memphis. Um, no, I don't think or, Memphis. Uh, excuse is one me, of Detroit, them. Detroit, right? Uh, Dallas, yeah. Detroit, Indianapolis had one. No, da- Dallas, Dallas, Detroit. Um, who's the West region? I don't know. North Carolina. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where the other ones are. Sorry. <laughs> I, I okay. Back to the Pacers. Should you have looked this up? Uh, they got a free roll at Detroit on Wednesday, um, but this is a big road trip at Golden State, who's not a great team this year, at the Lakers, who are not a great team this year, at the Clippers, who are pretty good, but um, those are still three teams where the level that the Pacers are playing right now, you can't take any of those for granted. Um, you know, they could very easily – first off, you got to win at Detroit, um, but they could very easily drop all three of those other games. Right. With the way that they're playing, sadly. Uh, we come back on the show, Quick Hits, and we will wrap up for the day. And for the week, I guess. This is a once a week show. It's Corian Schultz, ISC right. Sports Network. Hey, Steve, 
sports games are we going to tonight? You know we cover all sports in Central Indiana. Hop in, it's going to be a long night. Bailey and Wood Mortgage Lender, proud partner of News 8 Sports Hummer. Hey, AC! Nice snap. Mortgage is a snap. Duh! Bailey and Wood, a lending hand for Wish TV Sports. Thanks to Quick on the Trigger, Vince and the ISG crew today. I don't know. Vince has a appointment or what, but he's just speeding us through this show here. Speeding us through. It's Corey and Schultz, ISC Sports Network, presented by Bailey and Wood. We are back for a final time. Jake, we have to uh, get through and skip quick hits because, like I said, Vince is just um, all hopped all right. up today. How about know. this quick hit? Carb Day concert announced. Oh, yeah? Who's in it? George Thorogood? No idea. Country? Since the day I was born, to dan 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 dan, I'm bad to the bone. Yeah, I, I know that song. I drink alone. Okay, I have no idea who George yeah, Thurgood is. Yeah, with nobody else. Jim Blossoms? Yeah. Hey, Genesee. Kid Quill. Is that a DJ? I'm uh, he's he's an Indianapolis guy. I like him. Okay, I'm, I'm old, kind of um, so I don't really know. Okay, cool. Yeah, Jim, Jim Blossoms I can rock with. That album, everybody had that album. I don't even know what it was called, but um, not Cracked Rear View. But it was around that era, like right. 94, 95, somewhere around there. Um, let's talk about our friends at Chateau here real quick. Uh, we have a QR code up if you want to donate to Mal's Pals. Mallory is the late fiance of Stephen Moore, who's the owner of Chateau Kitchens. And Mallory, um, unfortunately, succumbed to leukemia um, not that long ago. It was the second loss to cancer that Stephen has suffered over the past three or four years as his dad as well, who's the original owner of uh, Chateau Kitchens passed away so uh steven has been through it. the chateau kitchens family has been through it and instead of moping around about it steven said well I'm, i want to do something um so we started a, a fundraising team and uh mallory is the inspiration for that so if you want to join the fundraising team uh you can do so right now by scanning that qr code on your screen and it goes to the uh, leukemia foundation if they raise fifty thousand dollars they get a, a research grant named after um mallory which would be really cool and, and a lasting legacy project for her and uh, we're happy to announce um, for, for us, and this is, I, I think, really the least that we can do from our relationship. Uh, both Jake and I will donate the proceeds of our uh, portion of the uh, Chateau Kitchens advertising for the month of March to the fundraiser. So we're going to we're going to do that. Um, and that we were not told to do that. That was just something that right. um, Jake and I wanted to do because we felt like it was the right thing, not only for for Stephen and for the folks at Chateau, but for Mallory as well uh, and in her memory. So you want to scan that QR code. We'll, we'll leave that up and we'll do that for the next couple of weeks as the fundraiser is going on. But Bader Bobleep, I give a statement. Jake and I go back and forth whether we buy it. Or it is I forgot boldly. to start the clock, by the way, so they'll have to tell us. When we Statement one, the NIT is on borrowed time. By yes, uh, totally buy it because teams are going to start opting out now because of the transfer portal. Unless the NCAA starts changing calendar timelines, uh, this is going to go the way of like some of the smaller bowl games where teams are like, yeah, you know what, we're not interested, no thanks. We got to get to, you know, kids want to transfer and coaches want to get transfers and... It's a mess. Let the mid-major conference regular season champions play in it, and then you'll be fine. The NIT will be what it is. Right. We, don't, we don't need Georgia to be in it. Uh, nobody cares. So that's all they have to do is, is make that little quirk. Uh, the Colts will not address cornerback in free agency. Buy it or Corner? Bowl. Cornerback. Uh, I would agree with that. Buy it. They I think they'll out of that. I mean, maybe a small last-second tier, but. I think they'll out of that. Uh, the Thursday and Friday of the NCAA tournament are the best two sports days of the year. Buy it or bowl. 100% buy it. Well, I mean, are we excluding the Carb Day Indy 500 combo? That's the problem. Even though they're not joined days, right? There's a gap yeah. in between. Um, I got to go month of May. But yeah, Thursday, I mean, and th Thursday and Friday, yeah, yeah, great. They're special. Thanks to Vince, even though he rushed us throughout the show. Thanks to Rake. Uh, thanks to JD. Thanks to Jordan as well. For Jake, I'm Derek. Thanks to all our great sponsors. Love Heating and Cooling, Nice Bison, Chateau Kitchens, Chili Water Brewing, Hoagies and Hops, and Bailey and Wood Financial Group. We will see you next time here on Quarry and Schultz, ISC Sports Network. At Bailey and Wood, we pride ourselves on our five-star customer service. But at our core, we're a family. Family owned and family to our customers, staff, and our community. From charity events to recognizing hometown heroes, we prioritize giving back to our communities that have always supported our growth. So let us help you get your dream home today.